In this short video, we will discuss what is Elasticsearch Mapping and what is Elasticsearch Analyzer. Let us first and foremost head back to the Elasticsearch documentation and find this awesome page called Glossary of Terms. I will link this page in the description below and I would highly, highly recommend all of you to definitely go through this because this page contains some of the very important terms which are very relevant to the Elasticsearch ecosystem. Say for example, analysis, what is a cluster, what is a document, what is a field, what is a mapping, what is an index and so on. Having put that thing behind us, now let us quickly head back to our Kibana console. So you might remember Jake from our previous example and we were creating a index called user in which we were having two fields. One is name and the other is job description. One more time we will head to the Elasticsearch documentation and look at the definition of a mapping. I will link this page also in the description below and hope that all of you will read through it. So mapping here it says is that is simply the process of defining how a document remember that in this case this is our document how a document and the fields it, it contains. So this document contains two fields the first is name the other is job description. How these fields are stored and indexed. For instance, it can tell us that what is the format of the date values, which of the fields are containing numbers or dates or locations and uh, which string fields should be treated as full text fields and which should not be. So essentially, the purpose of a mapping is to tell Elasticsearch how to store and how to index the fields in a particular document. And exactly what is a field? A mapping contains a list of fields or properties that are pertinent to that document, which means pertinent means that which are relevant to that document. So in the case of our example, the, the fields here would be name and job description. And this entire JSON structure is our document. Right here, it says that each field has its own data type. We can click on this document and see what are the common data types for a field. It can be binary, it can be Boolean, it can be keywords, it can be numbers and uh, all the definitions are given here uh, once more i'd like to encourage everyone to go through the various mapping types in elasticsearch so that you have a good understanding of the things that we are going to do next what i'll do now is i'll quickly head back to kibana and we had this document which had the fields of name and job description i will introduce one more field here and let me call it dov which is date of birth and it will be in mmm sorry y y y y m m d d format so after i have extended my document let me try to define a mapping for this document so begin on a new line by saying put so for defining a mapping we have to send a put call to the elasticsearch server we define the index name which is user and then in the next line we define the mapping json so here if I say map pings, then I would go inside this and then I would say properties. You see that it is suggesting me all of this. So it's not really hard work. Then I will pick my fields one by one. So let me say here DOB, DOB, which is date of birth. I will open another child for this field and I will say that DOB is of type date. Once I've written it all down, I'll click on send request and it shows me yes, acknowledge true and index user. So our user index has been freshly created. What happens if I try to send this call again? It will tell me that resource already exists. Okay, now let us quickly uh, see the resource that was freshly created. I'll give my index name here to a get call. And if I click on send request, we can see that my index name is user. It does not have any aliases and it has the following mapping. And in the mapping, I can exactly see the same values that I had passed here. So this mapping makes sure that Elasticsearch knows that whenever we index a document, which has a field called DOB, it will interpret its type as date 
and not as text. The next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to add this document in my index. As of now, I, our index has no documents. I'll add this document right here. And it says that result is created. Okay. Now, if I say click on get user, here is my mapping. And in this mapping, I can see that there are a few new terms introduced. The one that we added last time was DOB uh, date. Uh, which is of type date but the new terms introduced out here are this job description and name now you must be wondering where did these terms come from when this is the mapping that we have defined so what happens is this that when we add a document in which we have fields that are like are other from those that are defined in the map elasticsearch uses its reasonable defaults so elasticsearch is intelligent enough to understand that this field of has will be of type text this field called name will be of type text and this field called job description will be also of type text and then it just extends the already existing mapping for this index and adds the new fields right here let us see what happens when I search for something. So I go here and say get underscore search and the query that I give here is Jake. And yeah, that is what is expected. It returns me the document containing the term Jake. What happens if I change the search query to the term Weiss and well, again, it returns me the document which has the term Weiss. Now suppose I only want the search to take place on the name field and I do not want the search to take place on the job description field. So how do we go about doing that? We use mappings. Let me first and foremost just delete this user index. I send the request and it says yes, acknowledge is true. Now I come back to my mapping and I say job underscore desk which will be my job description field. Now, I don't want this field to be indexed. If a field is not indexed, it will not be searched upon. I specify the type of this, which will be text. Then I go ahead and say that index should be false. Essentially, I'm telling Elasticsearch to not build an index on this field. I send this request to Elastic and it con constructs my index. Now let us put this document in this index and the document is created. And what happens when I search for the term Weiss? Well, we have no hits. At the same time, when I search for the term Jake, what happens? Yes, I have a hit. So essentially our search is not now not taking place on the job description field because we have asked Elasticsearch in the mapping to not index that field. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to head back to Kibana and I'm going to delete this user index and I'll try to introduce the concept of text analysis. One more time, we'll head to the Elasticsearch documentation and read about text analysis from here. Here it says that text analysis is the process of converting the unstructured text into structured format, which is optimized for search. So what it essentially means is this, that when we get a large quantity of unstructured data, it might not be the most optimized data from a search perspective. So we might be forced to do certain kind of transformations on the data and store it in a particular way so that the search features are very optimized and return the results with low latency. Let me quickly head down in this document and let us see the section of concepts and anatomy of an analyzer essentially what an analyzer does for us. So here it tells us a, a, a few things uh, like character filters. The example it gives us is that it can say convert for us the Hindu new, uh, Arabic numerals, which look like this into Arabic Latin equivalents, which say look like this. Further, it, it tells us that say it can do tokenizing for us in, in which if we get, give it a string, quick brown fox, it can break it up into search terms such as quick brown fox. 
Another thing which text analysis will do it is that it will remove the punctuation marks. The next thing it claims to do is token filters in which it receives a token stream and can add, remove or change tokens. Suppose it can lowercase all the tokens, it can remove or filter out all the stop tokens such as a uh, and the in, out and, and terms like that. It also has a synonym token filter which can replace a term with its synonyms. So terms such as happy, jovial, joyful, elated and so on can all be all be filtered into the term happy. So the essential concept here is this that while indexing we do certain kind of text analysis on our document so that our document is optimized for search. And suppose if a user gives us a search query we perform similar kind of text analysis on the search query so that both both the document space that we have and the, the, the search query that is coming in have undergone the same process of te text analysis and can be compared easily. But what you need to do finally for your use case might depend on the problem at hand. To show it to you in action, I will head back to Kibana and we had already delete deleted this index. I will say that this time our job index field needs to be analyzed and the analyzer that we will be using is standard analyzer which is an inbuilt analyzer in Elasticsearch. When I send this request it says acknowledge true and when I get back the data about the index we can see that our job description field is of type text and will be analyzed by the standard analyzer. Now what is the standard analyzer? Let's again quickly head back to the Elasticsearch documentation and here we see that standard analyzer is a built-in analyzer of Elasticsearch which divides term at terms boundaries by a specified algorithm and then it also removes punctuations, lowercases all the terms and can also support removing the stop words. Similarly for your various use cases we have so many so many analyzers so I highly encourage all of you to go through this analyzer list and pick the best one according to your use case. Apart from these analyzers we have the provision of custom analyzers in Elasticsearch and these can be built by combining the appropriate character filters, tokenizers, token filters and so on. For this video, I would like to stop here. If you found the content of this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you find the content of my channel helpful, please click on subscribe. You can also click on the bell icon below so that you don't miss any new updates. And like always, thanks a lot for watching.